Happy the man whose offence is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. I kept it secret, and my frame was wasted. I groaned all day long. For night and day your hand was heavy upon me. Indeed, my strength was dried up, as by the summer's heat. But now I have acknowledged my sins. My guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offence to the Lord. And you... Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. So let every good man pray to you in the time of need. The floods of water may reach high, but him they shall not reach. You are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will give you counsel with my eye upon you. Be not like horse and mule, unintelligent, needing bridle and bit, else they will not approach you. Many sorrows has the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord Loving mercy surrounds him. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exult, you just. O oh, come, ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. Deep within his conscience, man discovers a law, which he has not laid upon himself, but which he must obey. Its voice, ever calling him to love and to do what is good and to avoid evil, sounds in his heart at the right moment. For man has in his heart a law inscribed by God. His conscience is man's most secret core and his sanctuary. There he is alone with God, whose voice echoes in his depths. So speaks the Second Vatican Council, describing that natural light we all have that guides us as to right and wrong. Our conscience is with us all the time, and we ignore it at our peril. Thanks to our fallen nature, sometimes it might lead us astray. Nothing makes an evil act good, even if we feel comfortable with it. That's why we need God's grace and the teaching of Christ in the Church to help us make right choices to help educate and train the conscience. But neither can we ever deliberately go against it. Trying to hide from that voice of God echoing in our nature, or bury it, or stifle it, can lead us to great unhappiness. Such is the tale of the psalmist in this psalm, which is the second of the traditional seven penitential psalms. According to the psalmist, you are happy when you are able to confess your sin openly and honestly before the Lord. Trying to deceive him who made you and loves you leads to an intense pain where the hand of the Lord, stretched out in mercy, seems heavy. But really, it is the weight of sin that is heavy. Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden light, as he told his apostles. It is such a relief to be given the gift of grace to admit our sin, even to ourselves and to God in the privacy of our heart. What a confirmation of that gift to be able to speak it aloud in the sacrament of confession and hear, in no merely half-imagined or fanciful way, but with absolute confidence and clarity, the words of absolution through which the Holy Spirit enters us and wipes sin utterly away. The Lord, who meets us in this sacrament of confession, is indeed our hiding place, our place of secret refuge and relief. We are not beasts of burden, designed to carry around for years our guilt. If we are proud, like the horse, or stubborn, 
like the mule, we may think ourselves able to. But the Lord made us not to need brute force to guide us, but the sweet encouragement of his teaching, like leading strings of love, as the prophet Hosea puts it. St. Peter fled from Christ. He who had been declared the rock claimed not to know him and disavowed his friendship. The cockcrow was the start of the journey back, that prick of the conscience to bring him, however painfully, to admit his guilt. Not long after, he would sit with the Lord and be given the chance again to tell him that he loved him. Jesus, you took on the burden of the cross to make my burden light. Let the light of your Spirit illumine my conscience and show all that is darkness and foul within me. Let me not be afraid of revealing my sins any more, because, in bringing them to you, you can set me free through the wonderful power of Peter's keys. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Ransom, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us.